Welcome to Headline Simsbury. I'm Karen Hanville. If you weren't able to attend the annual Martin Luther King Jr. celebration, that program will air throughout the month of February on SCTV. You can also watch the program on demand at simsburytv.org. Professor Joelle Murchison gave an excellent keynote address titled, Living the Dream in Times of Trouble. The Simsbury Police Department reminds residents and businesses to be mindful of blowing snow into and across the streets during winter snowfalls. Tell your snow remover not to clear driveways by pushing the snow into the streets, which makes it more difficult for the towns to plow. The Community and Social Services Department need volunteers each week to pick up food donations from area restaurants and grocery stores to support the multiple food programs that help those struggling with food insecurity. If you are able to do pickup or help on food distribution days, contact the Social Services Office at 658-3283. Dozens of volunteers and organizations are involved in planning Simsbury's 350th anniversary celebration going on all year in 2020. Some of the many events include an antique show, a river day, and country fair, with more to come. Learn how to get involved. Watch Dominique Avery's interview on the Simsbury View from a year ago already Search 350th on simsburytv.org. Simsbury will maintain its silver status for another four years. Across Connecticut, there are nine bike-friendly communities, and only Simsbury and New Haven have achieved their silver status. Out of the state's 11 bike-friendly businesses, three are here in Simsbury. It's a testament to the work that's been put into to encourage cycling, improve infrastructure, and improve cycling safety in the community. Go to simsbury.bike for a listing of upcoming events, rides, and meetings. Stay connected. Sign up for email updates from the town. At the bottom of the home page on the town's website, click community or emergency alerts. From there, you can choose which alerts you are interested in subscribing to. There are town news, town alerts, and Connecticut alerts. Get information about local development, town meeting agendas, opportunities to serve the town, emergency information, and more. You can specify exactly what you want to receive. Karen Stewart and Kate Coop are here to tell you about how you can learn CPR. Hi, my name is Kate Coop, Granby Ambulance Association's Chief of Service and Paramedic. My name is Karen Stewart. I'm also Chief of Service for Simsbury Volunteer Ambulance and a Paramedic as well. Last spring, the Simsbury Granby Rotary Club approached Simsbury Volunteer Ambulance Association and Granby Ambulance Association with the idea of providing free CPR classes in both towns. Two of the Rotary International's goals are to fight disease and support education. The Simsbury Granby Rotary chose to take on these goals locally by securing a grant that would educate and empower 300 local citizens who live or work in Simsbury or Granby to take action in the most serious of life-threatening emergencies, cardiac arrest. Heart disease, which includes coronary heart disease, high blood pressure, and stroke, remains the number one cause of death in the U.S. according to the American Heart Association's 2018 data. Approximately every 40 seconds, an American will have a heart attack. If that heart attack is untreated, if there is a delay in treatment, or the damage is too overwhelming, cardiac arrest will ensue. Cardiac arrest is an electrical malfunction in the heart that causes an irregular heartbeat and disrupts the flow of blood to the brain, lungs, and other organs. Emergency medical services need lay people to recognize and react when cardiac arrest has occurred. Why? According to the American Heart Association, about 90% of people who suffer out-of-hospital cardiac arrest will die. About 70% of those out-of-hospital cardiac arrests happen in homes. So we are truly talking about saving the family, friends, and neighbors when we urge citizens to come and learn cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR. 
When you come to class, you will hear us talk about adult, the adult chain of survival, the critical links that need to be in place to provide the best chance for a positive outcome of cardiac arrest victims. The lay rescuer fulfills the first three of the five links, early recognition and 911, early high quality CPR and early defibrillation with public, business or school AEDs. Every day, townspeople can be the difference for someone in dire need. You can save a life with these skills. American Heart Association Friends and Family CPR teaches hands-only CPR for adults and CPR with chest compressions and mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing for children and infants. Participants will practice these skills in addition to learning how to use an automated external defibrillator, AED, and how to assist a choking victim. The complete course is about three hours in length and participants receive a textbook so they may stay sharp after class has ended. Participants who wish to further their education with a certification course can make arrangements with their instructors. Sinsbury Volunteer Ambulance Association and Granby Ambulance Association are grateful for this opportunity to give back to our communities in such a powerful way. We are excited to see folks take advantage of this free education that can make a significant difference in the world around them. EMTs and paramedics, as well as other first responders, need everyday citizens to be everyday heroes when seconds count. Please take advantage of this generous scholarship from the Simsbury Granby Rotary Club while it lasts. For class dates or more information, please go to the Simsbury Volunteer Ambulance Association or Granby Ambulance Association Facebook pages and search our events. You can also see our classes listed on Eventbrite at www.eventbrite.com. Lastly, you can call us, Simsbury Volunteer Ambulance at 860-658. 7213 and Granby Ambulance Association at 860-653-6535. Thank you. The Farmington Valley Health District recently launched a new online monthly newsletter called Health Matters. This newsletter features information on timely public health issues, highlights the work of the health district, and alerts the public to trainings and other resources that may be available. To subscribe, visit fvhd.org and click Contact Us and enter the word newsletter in the comment box. The Health District also produces a monthly program that can be seen on SCTV. Check the schedule on the SCTV website for days and times. Terrafield Elementary School families participated in the school's first annual Empty Bowls Ice Cream Social, and it wasn't all about the ice cream and sprinkles. It was about helping people and raise awareness about food insecurity. These gatherings were begun by a, Mich a Michigan art teacher as a creative way to help with food drives. Upon arrival, donations were collected by Terrafield School Principal Steve Matzik, and each guest chose a handmade ceramic bowl, which they got to bring home as a memento and reminder of the need to fight hunger. Approximately 130 bowls were sculpted, glazed, and fired in the school kiln by the 5th grade exhibition committee and 6th grade design team. Bowls were filled with ice cream and toppings scooped by the 5th and 6th grade volunteers and donated by the school's parent-teacher organization. The $592 that was raised will be donated to the Hartford-based charity House of Bread, which provides food, shelter, and housing to those in need. Tables were set with art materials and historical games for families to play and for creating artwork. Quality time was spent with families, friends, and neighbors. Principal Matt Sheck thanked the families for their support, adding, what a great turnout. We may have to get a bigger venue next year. Eighth grade prospective engineering students from Henry James participated at Simsbury High School's fifth annual Girls in Engineering Day. Female Simsbury High School engineering students from all grade levels facilitated the tours demonstrated the tools and equipment, and answered questions from the middle school students. 
digital designs and 3D printing had students engaged in one of the rooms, while the STEM lab featured the high school's first robotics team robot. Coordinator Kurt Dugan encouraged the girls to take a turn at the controls to drive the four foot tall robot. When it came to trying out the Electrothon car built in the engineering design development class and raced each year at Lime Rock Park, there was no shortage of volunteers. Other demonstrations included use of the lathe for crafting custom wooden pens and the computer numerical control machine used to construct signage. In another room, the girls learned the power of engineering with computer-aided drafting software. After the tours and demonstrations, they were introduced to Melanie Marchetti, an engineer with extensive experience in the business. Her journey began as a flute player who just wanted to play the flute forever, but was persuaded to find another path by a pragmatic parent. Marchetti explained, my mom said people who play the flute forever live in their mother's basement forever. So she combined her passion for flute playing and became a music engineer, eventually branching out into other areas of engineering, including nuclear power. Marchetti said, now I live in my own house. The experience ended with the student volunteers sharing personal anecdotes, like sometimes a bad idea leads to a good one, and what it's like to be a minority in the field and sometimes the only girl in the class. If you are interested in learning a new skill or developing a new hobby, or you're looking for an evening exercise class, or would like to explore your artistic talent, check out continuing education classes. Perhaps you have a need to learn how to manage your finances or plan for your retirement or become a certified nurse's aide. Continuing education classes are available and there are many. For, for more information and a complete list, you go to simsbury.k12.ct.us slash DEC or contact their office at 658-3870. A clinic for cleaning and servicing your hearing aids will be available through the Senior Center on Monday, February 25th. All services are free. Call the Senior Center to make your 15-minute appointment. Mary Doyle Clark is here with more of what's going on at the Senior Center. Hi, I'm Mary Doyle Clark, and here's what's going on at the Simsbury Senior Center. Jared Day, PhD, will present the Big Band Sound on Thursday, February 28th from 1 to 2 p.m. at the Simsbury Public Library. This lecture examines the era of great American swing bands from the 1920s through the 1940s with special attention given to Paul Whiteman, Benny Goodman, Glenn Miller, the Dorsey Brothers, and Harry James. Dr. Day taught American history at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh for 16 years. His areas of specialization are U.S. political, urban, and cultural history, as well as world history from the late 18th century to the present. He is the author of several books, along with numerous other popular and peer-reviewed articles. This free program is co-sponsored by the Simsbury Senior Center and Simsbury Public Library. You may register at either location. You're invited to Coffee with the Chief on Thursday, March 7th at 10 a.m. Police Chief Nicholas Boulter will be at the Senior Center to discuss your community and public safety concerns in town and to exchange feedback and ideas. Join us on Thursday, March 7th from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. for the program, Challenge Your Mind, Daily Activities to Stay Sharp. Participants will learn how their memory works and discover creative ways to sharpen their minds. Presented by Amina Wieland, Certified Dementia Practitioner and Resource Coordinator at Hartford Healthcare Center for Healthy Aging. 
Ms. Wieland will also discuss the importance of social engagements and how they can protect against cognitive decline. This program is co-sponsored by the Simsbury Senior Center and Simsbury Public Library and will take place in the program room at the library. You may register at either location. The Simsbury Senior Center is located at 754 Hot Meadow Street in the Eno Memorial Hall building. Our hours are Mondays, 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., Tuesday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call us at 860-658-3273 for additional information or go to our website. Thanks for watching. See you at the Senior Center. The Farmington Valley Quilters will hold their next meeting on Wednesday, February 20th at 7 p.m. in Eno Memorial Hall, 754 Hot Meadow Street. The program will include a short demonstration of quilting and sewing techniques, and then it's time for members teaching members. Sign-in begins at 645 with guests welcomed for a $10 fee. The Second Chance Shop is a high-end boutique-style thrift store located at 12 Station Street next to Weldon Hardware. The Second Chance Shop accepts donations of clothing and jewelry, housewares, linens, and books. Profits from the sale of donated merchandise are given to the Village for Families and Children to help support the Village's many services and programs. Shop hours are Monday through Saturday, 9.30 to 4 p.m., with special evening hours from 4 to 7 on the first Thursday of the month. Enjoy a 50% off sale on February 27th and 28th. Everyone wins when you donate. The Hartford Symphony Orchestra continues its 2018-19 Sunday Serenades Chamber Music Series with Land, Sea, Sky on Sunday, February 24th at 2 p.m. at the Wadsworth Athenaeum Museum of Art in Hartford. A pre-concert gallery talk will take place at 1 p.m. Sunday Serenades Chamber Music Concerts are presented in collaboration with the Wadsworth Athenaeum as a musical counterpart to special exhibitions and the permanent collections. The Hartford Symphony Orchestra will present Dance Card, the second concert in the Intermix series, on Thursday, February 28th at 7 p.m. at Real Art Ways, located at 56 Arbor Street in Hartford. Intermix is intimate, inviting, and interactive. Dance Card is your chance to get up close with Hartford Symphony Orchestra ensembles as they perform at one of Hartford's most engaging contemporary art spaces, Real Art Ways. This program, led by Hartford Symphony Orchestra Music Director Carolyn Kwan, includes a thrilling combination of contemporary and traditional music set amongst innovative, multidisciplinary artwork. For tickets and information, visit hartfordsymphony.org or you can call them at 987-5900. Stephanie Prado is here with what's going on at the library. Hi, my name is Stephanie Prado and I'm the head of children's services at the Simsbury Public Library. I'm very excited to announce a new service we just started in 2019 called Raising Readers. Delivered monthly in the form of an email, Raising Readers has exclusive, age-specific recommendations for reading, learning, and exploring what the Simsbury Public Library has to offer. All of the content is created by us, and each email includes reading recommendations for children from birth through sixth grade. We select the books and book lists based on topics that are popular in the community and titles that we love. Please visit simsburylibrary.info slash raisingreaders or stop by the Children's Circulation Desk to sign up. We also have some great programs planned for February. First, we've partnered with our local Starbucks to offer coffee and crafts for parents and caregivers. On Tuesday mornings, Starbucks will provide the coffee and we'll set up a craft for kids and adults to enjoy, including coloring, paper heart crafts, water-resist painting, and a sculpture activity. 
This program is drop-in and for all ages and will take place on Tuesdays in February from 10 to 11 a.m. If Tuesday mornings don't work for you, you can drop in anytime before February 14th to make a Valentine's Day card for Simsbury seniors and residents. These cards will be delivered to residents at Belden Forest Court Retirement Community and to homebound Simsbury residents through our Books to Your Door program on Valentine's Day. We also have a few sweet programs planned this month, including Sci Girls, Candy Science on Thursday, February 21st at 4 p.m., where kids in grades three through six can sign up online to join us for fun experiments with candy. Then the following week, we'll hold a cupcake decorating contest for kids in kindergarten through sixth grade on Thursday, February 28th at 4 p.m. Kids can sign up to decorate a cupcake, take pictures, and vote on their favorite. The winner will receive a small prize and everyone will get to eat their creative treat. Make sure you keep an eye out towards the end of the month for our new calendar of events, which will cover March through May. We have some great events planned, including our third annual Simsbury Mini, Mini Maker Fair on May 4th. We hope everyone will attend, so please save the date. If you are interested in participating as a maker or a volunteer, please visit our website, simsbury.makerfair.com. We hope to see you at the library soon. Summer job applications for camp, lifeguarding, and maintenance positions at the Simsbury Parks and Recreation Department will be accepted until March 31st. Applications must be completed online at simsbury-ct.gov jobs. Parks and Recreation are adding new programs all the time, including paddle tennis, acting workshops, wellness seminars, and even a magic program. Visit them, simsburyrec.com, to see everything that is currently available. It's Girl Scout cookie time. There is power behind the Girl Scout cookie program. Girl Scouts use their cookie proceeds to take action in the community, like using their funds to collect and donate items to the local food bank or work with the town to clean up parks or hiking trails. Through the cookie program, Girl Scouts are learning valuable skills and changing our world. Visit gsofct.org to order Girl Scout cookies or learn how to join. Watch their brief video. When you buy delicious Girl Scout cookies, girls embark on great adventures. Explore exciting careers. Gain important life skills. Dream big. Face their fears. And so much more. That's right, your cookie purchase equals amazing experiences for millions of girls just like me. Simsbury Community Television is a 501c3 volunteer organization providing Simsbury residents a free place to share information since 1984. SCTV programs are available to watch on our three channels, our website and YouTube channel. But base funding is only provided to us if you are a cable subscriber and that annual amount set by the Connecticut Public Utility Regulatory Authority is less than $9 per year per household. Please consider supporting SCTV with a donation that can be made on our website or mail to SCTV, 754 Hot Meadow Street, Simsbury. If you're interested in volunteering at SCTV, or you have questions or comments, contact us at 658-1720, email us at simtv at yahoo.com, or visit us in the lower level of Eno Memorial Hall. I'm Karen Hanville, and we are SCTV, your town, your schools, your government. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. <laughs>